नमस्कार एंड वेल बाय वेलकम बैक टू पार्ट फोर ऑफ आईपीएस इन दिस पार्ट फोर वी विल बी डीलिंग विथ फ्लो चार्ट एंड ट्रबल शूटिंग ऑफ आईपीएस एज ए रिकैप इन द प्रीवियस थ्री पार्ट लेट एस सी वॉट वी हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न इन पार्ट वन वी हैव गॉन थ्रू द एडवांटेजेस ऑफ आईपीएस पार्ट टू डेल्ट विद द कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ आईपीएस part 3 dealt with the maintenance of ips now in part 4 we are dealing with the flow chart and may troubleshooting of ips to start with let us uh, go through this simple flow chart so this is the input uh, supply 230 volts which we are getting from uh, cls panel and that uh, 230 volt supply from cls panel is given Uh, to lpd spd box from lpd spd box we are getting this 230 volt supply as input this input supply we are using at uh, three places what are they one is input to frbc or uh, smrs the second input is uh, for avr signals while the third input is for avr tracks these smrs which are of 110 volts at uh, 20 amps rating Uh, gives an output of 110 volts dc this 110 volts dc we are again using it at four places what are they first thing is uh, input to inverters the second thing second is uh, charging the batteries third one as input to all the sm uh, dc dc converters in the dc dp and fourth is for point operation apart from that the status monitoring panel is also given 110 volt dc from the batteries directly normally any one inverter will be in switched on condition while the other one will be in standby mode so the load for all our signals is taken over by inverter so if let us say inverter 1 is working and the inverter 1 output is fed to our transformers that is uh, 230 volts so one 230 volts input uh, stepped down to 110 volts dc with a capacity of 0.5 kva there will be four such transformers two are used for our signals in up direction and two are used for our signals in down direction in case inverter one fails then automatically inverter two takes the load even inverter 2 fails then we have our avr which takes the load automatically if the switch is in auto mode so in this way our main target is to have 230 volt supply continuously to our signal transformers coming to the tracks avr tracks input is 230 volts and output is also 230 volts this 230 volts is given as input to our Uh, two step down transformers which uh, one is used for uh, track circuits in up direction to feed all our uh, track with charges while the second one is used to feed track with charges in the down direction going further what is the best method to replace a defective secondary cell in an ips bank if you want to replace a defective secondary cell first see that there are no train movements basically if there is any uh, sudden problem you need of uh, power supply not available either from the battery or smr then you need to have some time to bring back the system to pick up all the stick relays and other such things hence preferably see that there are no train movements follow the disconnection reconnection procedure take a disconnection uh, for replacing the batteries first thing you have to do is to remove the battery fuse let us say f1 in the sm which is available in the smr common cabinet generally a 50 amps battery a 50 amps fuse or a 60 amps fuse is provided this fuse has to be removed if you want to work on the battery if you are not very confident about this fuse or you have uh, any confusion over that there is also other method where you can remove the positive or negative terminals 
uh, which uh, comes to the battery. By doing this, spark is minimized and it is easy to work. Now, work on the batteries and if there is any defective cell, replace those defective cell also. And after completing the work, replace the fuse. What is the maintenance that you need to do and how you have to carry out the maintenance of batteries? Whenever you want to do the battery maintenance, switch off SMRs for at least one hour. When the battery is on load, then only the correct output of the battery is known to us. So you should keep the battery on load and switch off the SMRs for at least one hour. Take all the readings. What are the readings we generally take? Specific gravity and voltages of all the independent cells and the combined voltage of the battery bank also. Generally, if the voltage is at 110 volts, which stands one at 110 volts even after one hour, rest assured that your cells are in good condition. But if there is any voltage drop, suddenly you have seen that the voltage after one hour is uh, very less, 104 volts, 106 volts, then you need to check out if all the battery, if all the cells in the battery bank are have come down, or any particular cell has gone uh, reverse or defective. You have to make arrangements for replacing the cell after switching on your SMRs. Here, do not maintain the cells when the SMRs are in off condition. When the SMRs are off condition, if you try to do any maintenance like cleaning or tightening, what would happen? Maybe suddenly you ask, uh, the link may come out, already SMRs are in switched off condition then the whole system will shut down, thus creating a major failure. Hence, you should not do any, you should not do any maintenance when your uh, SMRs are in off condition. Now switch on your SMRs, wait for at least 10 minutes. This generally 10 minutes is required to uh, settle your battery and in case any, because of excess current being taken by the battery, the switch may uh, go defective. To find out any such, to rule out any such problems, you just wait for 10 minutes and then do the maintenance of the cells. This is your CLS panel and here you can see two MCVs, two set of MCVs. One is at the input level and one is the, at the output level. When does this input MCVs trip in case the change over circuit becomes defective in the CLS panel. There will be a change over circuit in the CLS panel. Generally, we have three inputs, up AT, down AT and local supply. But only one will be going out. So, there will be a change over circuit in this uh, CLS panel. If that defect becomes defective, short circuit, anything can happen. Even this boy is in generally in auto mode, then this MCB can trip or any short circuit in this panel also, it can trip. Then why does an MCB, output MCB trip? Maybe if there is any 230 volt supply short circuit from your CLS panel to your SMR input level, then or even in LPD, SPD uh, box also, if there is any defect or LPD, SPD goes defective, then this MCB can trip. Now let us go through the maintenance flow chart for FRBCs. Generally follow the guidelines given by your uh, IPS so original equipment manufacturer manuals will be there. Here let us see what to do with uh, in the S, uh, SMPS panel. Check the input voltage. What should be the input voltage? It should be from 160 to 270 volts. Generally it will be 230 volts. If the input level is within limits, there is nothing to do. You have to go to the step next stage. But in case, if the input level is not within limits, then what you have to do? What you have to check? You check the input AT supply, which is coming into your CLS panel and rectify if there is any problem. Or if you have a DG set, switch on the DG set temporarily till your AT supply or your local supply is restored back. Now, if AC supply is available to your SMRs, then what you have to check? If it is available, then you can go directly 
to the next stage. But if the input SEAC are not available to your SMRs, then you have to check the uh, static switch. There will be a under voltage, over voltage circuit and a static switch in that circuit that you have to uh, check and replace if there is any defective in that one. There will be a PCB. This is uh, a simple model of that PCB. If it becomes defective, you have to replace this one. Check the SMPS output voltage at the load terminals. Now adjust set parameters in the CSU as per the site requirements. Generally, this is already done by the uh, uh, company original equipment manufacturer. If it is not done, then you have to adjust generally the float voltage, boost voltage and SMR current limit. All the other settings are already factory made or adjusted by the uh, manufacturer himself at the site or in the factory. So these three voltages, uh, these three parameters are to be set by the user at the station. If they are adjusted, then you have to check your LVDS contract unit if it is closed. If the LVDS contract unit is closed, then you go further. If it is not closed, that is if the LVDS is open, if the LVDS is open, then what you have to check? You have to check the battery fuse. The LVDS contactor unit may become defective. Replace if they have failed. If your LVDS is defective, then you have to bypass your LVDS if required. If you bypass the battery protection feature is not available. Now, now when you discharge the battery for one hour and charge again, what should happen? When you discharge the battery, is SMPS automatically entering into boost mode after you discharge and uh, charge again that is switched off battery for one hour and again you have switched on your charger then you should enter into boost mode if it is not entering into boost mode then what you have to check check if the battery charging current in controller and the uh, voltage and the current measured by you with the help of an ammeter or same maybe your uh, battery charging current in the controller or the CSU panel may have become defective. If uh, the battery current displayed is correct uh, and is matching with the ammeter which you have, then allow further discharge. If it is not same, that is you have found out that the uh, Hall effect sensor which, you, which will is used to measure the current taken by the battery becomes defective then you have to replace that one. But if you find out that everything is okay, that is the, the measured the measuring current by the IPS and your uh, bolt and your ammeter, multimeter is same, then you have to go further. Allow battery to charge fully in boost mode and comes back to float mode. So now once uh, discharged and you switch on your uh, SMRs, it will go to boost mode. And uh, when it will go to boost mode, SMR will go to boost mode if the current is 8 to 10 percent of the set value. 8 to 10 percent of the set value. Let us say you have uh, kept as 20 amps is your set limit. Then if uh, 10% that is if the battery is taking more than 2 amps it will go to boost mode if the current is becomes less than 5% that is less than 1 amp then it will go to your float mode this will take automatically is AC input voltage displayed correctly if it is not being displaced then you have to replace your MMIB that is mains monitoring interface board. Similarly, if AC input current is being displayed correctly, if the current is not displayed then you have to replace your input hall effect sensor.
now is inverter on load observed in inverter one now we are talking about ac distribution panel in ac distribution panel inverter will one will be on load if it is not on load generally it should be on load but if it is not on load then you have to check the concerned scr spare one and replace it if it, if it is defective also replace the changeover board if the concerned scr is okay if your inverter one is observed is for taking or is on load and is okay then what you have to do you have to switch off inverter one and see that the load is transferred to inverter two in case this transfer is not taking place from inverter 1 to inverter 2 then you have to check out if uh, scr of the concerned uh, switch that is uh, uh, I, uh, inverter is also defective these rectifiers may become defective or the auto changeover circuit may be defective apart from this you have to change it if the reverse is also okay that is when inverter uh, inverter uh, 2 is switched on the load should be transferred from avr to inverter 2 and if it inverter 1 is also okay then automatically the load should shift back to inverter 1 if uh, the auto changeover system fails then keep the switch in manual mode this is your circuit this is your uh, pcb this is your auto bar changeover manual uh, auto bar manual changeover switch and this is your contactor unit thank you with this i conclude ips thank you